Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating some realistic watercolor lettering and then embellishing it with some fall foliage. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. The color palette is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. This week I am also including a start file that just has the lettering all ready to go if you'd like to focus on applying the effects to the lettering rather than creating the lettering itself. If you'd rather create your your own lettering from scratch, then there's no need to download that start file. But the link to that is right in the video description. For this tutorial, we're using two different brush sets, my watercolor lettering brush set, as well as my watercolor illustration brush set. So links to all of that are right in the video description. So I'm going to begin by opening up that start file, which is sized at 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 DPI, and then we'll get started. Here's what that start file looks like. Once again, all we have in here is the lettering in black on its own layer right above the background color layer. So pretty basic. All right, we're going to start by applying some effects to our lettering and then we'll move on to the embellishment second. So with Procreate 5X, they've actually removed one of my favorite options, which is the recolor option. I'm sure other people were bummed about that too. So I wanted to quickly share the two ways that I recolor objects now within Procreate in case you're struggling working without that as well. So the first one is probably going to be pretty familiar. It's just the color drop method. So I'm going to grab this light purple up at the top and then you just drag it on top of the element that you'd like to recolor. If you have a layer that has a lot of separate elements and you want to recolor them all, then you might want to use the second option that I'm going to share with you. But if you just have one element that you want to recolor, this is a really good option. One of the times that I would recommend not doing the color drop is if you have an element that has really soft edges. Here it's kind of a mixture of soft and crisp edges with this watercolor effect. So I can get away with it here, but if I had any softer edges, sometimes the previous color can peek through along that soft edge. So in that situation, you'd wanna use the second option. So the second option, let me undo this, is we're going to maintain the original layer. So we're just going to grab a selection of what the original layer is. So I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail and choose select. And now my lettering and my lettering alone is selected. I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it and then select the color you wanna change it to. So in this case, it's that light purple. Come back to your layers and on this brand new layer, you're just going to tap on the layer thumbnail and choose fill layer. And that will fill it with a new color. But you can see the black is poking out from behind it and in order to get rid of that all you have to do is uncheck the visibility and now we're all set to go and then you don't have to color drop a zillion different elements if you've got a zillion different elements that need to be recolored. So those are the two methods that I generally use. They cover basically any situation you're in. So really fast and really easy. Just make sure you turn off the visibility of the existing lettering if you're using method number two. All right, so now we get to do all the fun stuff. And the first thing we're going to do is apply a watercolor texture to our lettering to start getting it looking more realistic. So in order to do that, we're going to use the smudge tool and our smudge tool is right up here, but we need to create a selection of the lettering that we're using right now because when you smudge, everything pushes out from where you're smudging and we want to maintain it right within the bounds of the lettering itself. So right around the edges of the lettering, we want to make sure those edges stay nice and crisp. A nice way to do that is just creating a selection of it before you start smudging. So I'll show you what that looks like. You're just going to tap on the layer thumbnail and choose select and you can see we've got the diagonal lines running along so we know we've got a selection. Now we're going to come to our smudge tool and I'm in my watercolor lettering brush set and I'm grabbing the texturizer. The texturizer is a really nice brush for immediately applying some watercolor texture to your lettering. I generally use this brush in the medium to large range of my size. So right now I've got 10% size selected. So I'm just going to tap on the screen and you can see we're getting some texture. If it gets a little too intense, it's actually helpful if you make it even larger and it will be a little bit lighter and less intense when you do that. So if you want it more intense, just bring it down. And I'm kind of sporadic with it because we don't want it to look like we're planning this out. With watercolor texture, it's randomly occurring. So we want to mimic that here. So I'm just grabbing a few areas, but I'm making sure that I still have other areas that do not have any texture in them. 
Okay, once you're happy with how your texture is coming along, the next thing we're going to do is apply some dark edges. So in traditional watercolor lettering, as your water pools and dries, it'll push some of the color to the edges of your lettering. And when it dries, the edges here and there are just a little bit darker depending on where the water pooled up with the individual strokes. So we're going to mimic that right now. We can deselect our lettering. We're going to create a brand new layer right above our lettering layer. And let me label this one lettering. And on the layer right above, Above it we're just going to label this one dark edges and we're going to apply a clipping mask to this since this is additive we're applying it on top of our lettering we can apply a clipping mask but when you are smudging something that's why we couldn't use a clipping mask we were adjusting something that already existed right now we're adding to our lettering so that's why we can use a clipping mask so I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask so whatever we do on this layer paint on this layer will be locked into the bounds of this layer and we're going to grab our darker purple for this and come to your brushes and the watercolor lettering brush set I'm grabbing my round paint brush for lettering so it's a bit of a harder edged brush and then we're going to smudge it to make it look that much more realistic so I am going to randomly go along some of the edges and we're just going to darken them up slightly Okay, you can see I've got my edges all in there and it's kind of intense right now. So we're going to tone it back a little bit by smudging it. So I'm going to go back to my smudge tool and this time we're going to use a semi dry wash, which is a very, very subtle smudge brush. So if I come in here, I can just push that color a bit. I'm still getting a decent amount of that hard edge appearing, but now it's less intense. So you can keep smudging with this. If you want that hard edge to totally disappear, just keep smudging. It's completely up to you how much smudge you would like to do, but that is the effect we're going for. All right, so we've got those darker edges in there and it's just a nice subtle detail here and there to make it even more realistic. So the next thing we're going to do is add in some water blooms. And in order to do that, we need to go back to our original selection of our lettering. So I'm going to come back to our lettering, tap on the layer thumbnail and choose select. And we're going to grab our smudge brush again. And we're going to grab our watercolor bleed brush right here. And this one is really fun to use for applying those water spots to the edges of your lettering. So if I push in just a little bit, let me reduce the size a little bit on this. This is coming down to 10%. So I can push in on different areas and it can just appear that I had a little bit of extra water that washed out the color in these areas. So I can just push in. And when you do this, it naturally creates a little bit of a dark edge which is just a nice added effect. So I'm not going to do this everywhere, but I definitely want to add in a few of these details here and there. So if you want to make it more subtle, because these ones are pretty obvious, the ones that I've done already, but I want a really nice subtle one at the bottom of the loop of my G. So all I have to do is increase the size of it. I'm up to 20% and start pushing way back from where you want it to hit because the size of this will start taking effect as you get closer to it. So if you watch the bottom part of the G as I start pushing here, it's gonna push the color and you can see I can get some nice subtle effects that way which aren't completely intense like some of the other ones. I can do that on the top part of the G too. So that also adds to the, the texture of the lettering. So there we go, we've got our lettering all set. And the last thing I wanna do is drop in some additional color on top of it. So I'm going to deselect this. We're going to create a clipping mask once again. So tap on your topmost layer, create a new layer right above it, apply a clipping mask. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask. We're going to rename this one yellow. I'm going to grab my yellow color down here at the bottom row. I'm going to grab my brush. And for this brush, I'm going to use my damp smudger brush down here. I'm going to make this one about 10% and just drop in the color here and there. And I also want to add in just a little bit of my darker purple on here too to tie those dark edges together. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and just label this one dark purple. Tap on the layer thumbnail, choose clipping mask. I'm going to grab my dark purple and do the same thing. Just in a few areas, add in a little bit of dark purple. 
Now we are all ready to go with our embellishments. Let's group all of our lettering layers together. So just drag them to the right, group, label this one lettering. And now it's time to add in our embellishments. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above my lettering layer. And this one, we're just going to add in the branches first, then we're going to fill everything out. So for the branches, I'm going to use this brown color in the middle on the bottom row. I'm going to head into my watercolor illustration brush set and come up to the round liner brush, which is a textured, almost mono weight brush. And I'm going to reduce the size down to about 6%. Let's see what that size looks like. That looks pretty good. And we're going to just draw an arced line that comes from underneath the crossbar of the T and swooshes up. And we're going to make that same type of curve start where the H hits right here and coming around. So it's basically the same thing mirrored. And that little bit of symmetry will help your eye focus on the lettering and everything will feel really balanced then. It doesn't all have to be symmetrical, but these large big strokes really help everything to feel more balanced that way. Okay, so I'm going to create a few branches that come off of this and that's where we're going to put our leaves and our fall berries. Now we can start dropping in some of our leaves on top of the branches. So create a brand new layer. Our leaves are going to be the dark purple. We're going to grab our medium paint round brush. And with this brush, whenever you draw something and then you draw on top of it, you're going to get a wet on dry effect, which is pretty cool. Just adding to that realistic watercolor effect. Let me do another one over here so you can see it. See it again. You can see that overlap happening, which is really pretty, especially for leafy elements. So I'm just going to come around these branches and add in some leaves, some of them where they overlap, and then other ones where they're just single leaves here and there. Okay, we've got all of our leaves drawn in and now we're going to add some berries to those branches. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my pink color and with the same exact brush, this medium paint round brush, it's a pressure sensitive brush. So if you push a lot of pressure, you're going to get a giant mark. If you put a little bit of pressure, you're going to get a tiny mark. So we're going to change up the size and add in some berries in varying sizes and in varying cluster size. So I've got like three right here, two right there. I can put one right there. So I'm just going to go around the branches and wherever it feels like that area could use just a little something extra, I'm going to add some berries or a little cluster of berries. Okay, once you have your berries all drawn in, now we're going to add in some wheat elements, which screams fall. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my gold yellowish color. So I'm going to go back to my round liner brush, but reduce the size of it, because this is a supporting element. I'm down to 3%. And just in some of these open areas where the branches open up, we're going to just draw in a few lines. Once you have those lines, we're going to grab our medium paint round brush again, reduce the size down to about 6% for this. And on the end of these stems, we're just going to put a dot and then we're going to angle. I usually stick between three and four on these sides and then mimic the exact same thing on the other side. And that will immediately communicate to the eye that these are wheat elements. So I'm just going to go around and add that on all of these stems that we drew. We've got all of our wheat elements now, and the next thing we're going to do is drop in our pine elements, then we'll fill everything out with some golden leaves. So let's jump into our pine elements. I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to return to my round liner brush. I'm going to make this one just a hair larger than our wheat. So I'm at 4% for this, and I'm going to grab this very first color right here. Wherever there is existing empty space. This one's going to be a larger looking element than our wheat, so just keep that in mind whenever you're drawing it out. So I just have a few of these ones, and to draw the pine, it's basically the same as the wheat, only these are going to remain lines and they're going to go further down the stem. So the lines are going to get larger as you go and they're going to go further. Okay. 
Okay, we've got our pine elements in there and now to tie everything together and to fill in some of the white space that's still remaining, we're going to add in some golden leaves. And this is a really good element for that space filler. So I'm going to go back to my medium paint round brush. I'm going to grab my gold color and we're just going to fill in some simple leaves. And I make these leaf shapes just slightly different than my other ones, that adding just a little bit more variety. And I'm also being careful not to touch my existing elements. I don't want it to seem too busy. So the last thing that we have left is just adding in a background color and then adding a watercolor paper texture on top of everything. So in order to apply the background color, just come to your layers, hit background color, and choose the very first color right here. So it's just a little bit of a cream color to tie everything together. And then what I'm going to do is come to my layers all the way at the very top, create a brand new layer. I'm going to choose black. So double tap where the black is and that will give you true black. And the watercolor illustration brush set actually came Came with a bunch of pattern brushes for watercolor paper texture at the very bottom so you can see we've got deep tooth fine tooth medium deep and medium tooth so I'm going to select the medium tooth texture right here and the way this brush works is you you make it max size and then you're just going to paint over the top of it and do it in one continuous motion without picking up your stylus and then once you're all done if you zoom in you can see that really pretty paper texture all the way around and through all of your elements. If you want it to blend just a little more seamlessly with everything that's beneath it, I change the blend mode of this to multiply. So there we go. So that's how to create realistic watercolor lettering embellished with fall foliage. Once again, links to everything mentioned in this tutorial are right in the video description, including the free color palette, the free start file, and both brush sets that were used. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every hyphen tuesday.com you can also find me over on instagram my handle is every tuesday if you try this out and post it there i would love it if you tag me thanks so much for watching and i will see you next week